welcome. I'm Stephen Jones. I'm joined by Richard Payne. And welcome to the EMBN Show. On today's show, we have Juggernaut's Clutches and the odd Rotovator. <laughs> also, the Ari Wire Peak and the new Bluegrass Helmet. All coming up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the other Richard Payne on the show today. Yeah, the English version. The English version. <laughs> Hello. The Somerset version. Ah, through and through, mate. Yeah. Through and through. Rotovator. And we've got the juggernaut. <laughs> anyway, first of all, Harry's back on the show now. Harry Peak. We had mm. Harry on the show a few weeks ago with the uh, lower assist did, yes. mountain bike. But this is the full power bike. This is the Harry Wire Peak 2.0. Mm -hmm. And this has got a custom tuned uh, Shimano E6000 motor on it. 160 mil travel front, 145 rear, 635 watt hour batteries. Yeah. Um, what I like about this bike, Rich, is that they have size-specific geometry on there. <laughs> so all the angles are adjusted, adjusted for each of the sizes. I'm going to give you some of the angles. 65 degree head tube angle, 78 degree seat tube angle, uh, 29 inch or mixed wheel compatibility, aluminium frame and three build options. Yeah, I mean, tidy numbers. Uh, you know, I think a good little package wrapped up there, really. Tidy. That's, tidy. That's the Welshness is slipping into, wow. isn't it? Wow. Well, Stephen, yeah, next just... up, I've got this for you people. Next up, Bike Tricks. Now, this is the Juggernaut X DFS. That's a hell of a name. Now this, with over 2,000 watts of power, two chains, Stephen, take it away from two, two chains. chains. Well, I think the two chain thing is fantastic because you know you talk about the bike vault. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> yes. can't have the non-drive side. I this can't. is the massive solution from Bike Tricks. Juggernaut yeah. XDFS. Uh, 910 watt hour battery. Massive. Uh, That's a 30, big battery. 32.4 kilos. It's not the lightest e mounted bike out there. No, no, it's not. Far it's, from it. It's uh, nice to have some different stuff on the on the EMBN show. Agreed. Isn't it? Travel Thank options. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Travel <laughs> options between 100 and 150 mil. 460 reach and a large 72 seat tube angle and a 63 head angle. That's pretty slack. I like those numbers though, really. Yeah, slack. Right, onwards. New uh, Bluecrass Jetro helmet. This is sort of a. A half face helmet, yeah, we yeah. call it. Yeah. Um, it's the only safety, it's got the NTA 8776, which is the only safety standard created for speed e mountain bikes. So yeah. You can we actually use it on the road. Yeah. Not that we will be. Yeah, uh, an EPS shell, uh, full face, well, no, I don't want to say fit, full face coverage in terms of it wraps really low down at the back, nice and sort of low down around the front, but it's not a full face helmet, it doesn't have a chin bar. Exactly. So uh, I do think that's an interesting e-bike option. 21 vents, compatible with goggles. Yeah. I struggle with goggles and some helmets. Uh, 250 euros, 225 pounds. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a closer look at that helmet, Rich, up on the hills. Until we get our will. hands on one. Yes. Now, e-bike with a clutch. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, kind of diving into like more of the urban mm. side of the e-mountain bike world. Uh, it's a Berlin-based brand, Lemo, and they've just released their Lemo One in the UK. Interesting concept, this Rich. Yeah. Uh, now, I, I'm not too familiar with it, so I'm going to let you take the reins on this one. <laughs> but I was literally <laughs> saying a terrible horse. before we descend into more anarchy, and then you went and did that. You wrote but let's, later. No, stay uh, on topic, Steve. What have we got? A clutch e-bike. Look. All joking aside, uh, folks, I just thought I had to give Rich back a little bit of the Welshness he was giving me last week. <laughs> yes. Rotovator. Stop saying rotovator. 40 it's... newton meters of peak power and a rear hub drive motor, a duo mode hub, free hub or motor in one switch, um, 540 watt hour yeah. top capacity, removable smart pack as uh, the battery charge ports and GPS tracking. I mean, 2,380 amp for the belt drive. I like the idea of so a belt drive. So here's the question drive. for you. Yeah, that's it, belt drive. We mm. rode the Pinion MGU a few yes. weeks ago with the uh, Gates carbon drive yep. on it. I think carbon drive is interesting. What for me, like in that video, the feeling I got riding down the hill, the silence. Yes. With you know, with no no derailleur or cassette yeah. or cables, internal cables. So rattling. you've ridden a motorized. I've ridden a non-motorized in the Gamex downhill bike. All right, okay. Which is the electronic pinion shifted, right? Belt driven. Get a, box. I'm, obviously, downhill is my background. I reckon, and I put my money on the line. I reckon gearbox mountain bikes will be on the podium at World Cup downhill races in the next few years. 
Yeah, I'll put it out there. I no, I agree. And what is it there? I mean, we're straying off topic, but Gamex are actually offering is it hundred grand? I think if what someone gets a podium. Exactly. Or Exactly. Uh, anyway, but back to the e-bike of the clutch. 18 kilos, and it is a city bike. Uh, 2,389. No bad at all, then. Not bad at all. No. Uh, so that's the news this, this week, folks. Um, got some very hot content coming up on the channel in terms of news and bikes over the weeks ahead. Some very cool e-mounted bikes coming onto the market, so keep your eyes tuned. Eyes tuned? Yeah, and your ears. Uh, right, Steve, last week on location, our new segment in the EMBN show, and we looked at Jacob's Ladder here in the UK. Mm -hmm. We've gone abroad. We have. And yeah. this Italy. is Val Valmyra last summer. Yeah, this is somewhere you went with your friend AD, right? With AD and Joey behind the lens. Yes. I think this is like, you know, a bit of, we've got summer coming up, a bit of inspiration for you oh, guys yeah, to we need it. places. Because we were sat in the cafe yesterday, and an old friend of mine says, and it with his nine year old son, yeah. where, where should we go? Because there, exactly. are, there are lots of places to go. And I think, I think maybe e-mountain biking is, is a different sport. And I think it mm. offers different challenges. And I think Monte Bellino was a classic challenge. It was 10,000 feet. So you had, yeah. you had range, technical difficulty. Yeah. We had the weather. I mean, when you go to mountain environments, like the day before was horizontal rain. Yeah. The day after was horizontal rain. So like, yeah, this kind of high jinks involved that, and when you when you go into the mountains, you know yourself. Oh, right? I mean it can be perfect one. You I mean, even at different on the same day at different altitudes the weather can change. So I, I mean you spoke last week when you went to the uh it's the south of Mont Blanc yeah. when you did with, with Tito. Tito, yeah. I mean the weather was crystal. We right? got lucky. We got lucky. We got lucky here. This is this is a fantastic climb, folks. It's so, it's actually an old military track to okay. get you to the top. And what bike were you on? I was on the Canyon Neuron on. Battery? The neuron on on on. The neuron, neuron on. on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, battery 750 watt hours. Okay. I mean, the neuron is 29 inch wheels, 140 mil travel. We wanted to see range. We wanted to see if like a, what's pretty much a trail bike could get up into into the mountain conditions and and deal with it. Yeah. Which it did. However, ah. <laughs> so the trail. The the tr we just about got to the top, 10,000 feet. Uh, the last bit was. Precipitous, to say the least. <laughs> That's a very and good then, way of putting it. And then Aidy's like, "Well, we could have gone that way, but we, actually, we're going to go down that way, which really? was dreamy, dreamy oh. tech. I mean, it was, it was, it was absolutely amazing. So, I mean, obviously, you know, mountains for people who might want to go out there. Where, I mean, was it uh, Shepherd's Hut? Were you camping? You weren't camping. Where did you stay? What five star hotel? What five star hotel? Yeah, That's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the five star hotel was actually to the to the to the south of Valmyra. Okay. Actually, I'll, leave, I'll leave the details of the of the. Yeah, I think that'd be good hotel, for the viewers. It, it was proper five star. It was great. Was it? Uh, but what? It's such a remote area. Absolutely so okay. quiet. No crowds. No way marking. No nothing. It was all about route finding, and that's what I love about adventures. And that brings me nice on to my next question I had for you then. Sort of planning for something like this, where an area is, because a lot of the times, you know, if you for the people that might frequent morzine and sort of those those very popular areas it's not like that at all is it's it right totally you, you are, you're not just popping down spa or you literally no. can in morzine no you got you got to you know you got to take your food like yeah. route, route planning is very much you know supplies. On, a map, on a map supplies yeah took lots of energy bars yeah. <laughs> but also equipment for whilst you're out there coaxing you know you can't just go yeah. up well he did yeah 10,000 feet we had uh, first fortunately on that trip go bikeware uh, were a partner on, okay. that, on that on that particular trip uh, and yeah, it, well, I, all I can say is I, I highly recommend you guys go and check out Valmyra. Guided? You can get it guided. Okay. It's actually, ca it can be part of the Stone King Rally. Oh, which, okay. Yeah, it, it is actually, well, it nips, a, it, it covers a little section of it, right. of what we did. But what we did was was a classic military road, road climb, insane tech descent. So, okay. Uh, so yeah. in total then, how far did you go? On that, on that one battery, Ooh, how far, a, do you remember? Lot, we, we were like, on, we, battery was out for the time we got home. The battery, oh, was, the got, battery was dead. The battery was dead when we got to the pint of beer. Actually, several pints of beer and several nuts. <laughs> it's just the perrier. And, <laughs> and, and a bowl full. Yeah, so there you go, folks. That, oh, wow. That's on location in Monte Bellino for this week. Next up, it's time for your video bike checks. Your one minute video bike Ooh. checks. Now last week we had Steve on the show. Today we've got Rachel. So this is Rachel's uh, bike check of her EMTB. 
Hello, I'm Rachel, and this is my Specialized Levo SL, and I absolutely love it. Reasons why I love it. Frame size, it's perfect for me at five foot three. Secondly, it's made of carbon. I can move it, I can pick it up. It's not an issue. I don't need somebody to put it on the bike rack for me. Other things I love, it's electric. It doesn't, it helps me when I have to go up those steep hills. It's, some people think of it as a cheat, but it's not. For me, what it means is, instead of doing two road trips, two trips up the mountain, I can do three or four. It just gives me that extra boost when I need it and I don't get worn out. Is there anything I could change? Not a lot, but I do have one niggle and this is to do with the rear suspension. It's got a really big little blue knob here that shuts the rear suspension off and on and if you're not careful you can knock it when you're riding and that's a nuisance. Rachel, thank you very much for sending in your video bike check. That Specialized looks delightful and uh, well, some nice details about that there as well. Talking about details, actually oh. folks, if you do send your bike uh, check, your one minute bike checks in, please add some video details of, of the bike, the forks and the tires. The yeah, motor, more the merrier, we do like to see it. Kind of stuff. Be careful of your of your audio quality as well, make sure it's in a quieter place. Get Maybe get close in to, to the camera when you're doing your recording. So uh, yeah, send them in. Actually, Rich, talking about people we bump out on the trail, we bumped into Al Pendry recently. Ah. Now, we had a video on the channel about how long does an e-mounted bug motor last? How do you, what, what happens if you break your e-mounted yeah. motor? Now, Al has got a different story. Now, just bumped into Al Pendry from Derbyshire here on the trails in the Forest of Dean, the UK. Uh, now, a few weeks ago, we talked about uh, the reliability of e-mounted bug motors, how much it costs to fix them. Of course, for many people, they actually have never had a motor to repair, such as Al. This is your original on your Caneva, right? It's the original one, yeah. It's done about two and a half thousand miles. It's a 2020. I ride it most weeks, swap between this and an SL. Yeah. Oh, you've got two e-man bags? Yeah. Okay, right, yeah. Which one do you ride most? 50-50. Uh, is it? 50-50, yeah. Around Canuck mostly, because that's local. Yeah, yeah. Do you find you do different types of riding on the two different bikes? Yeah. More cross country on the SL, okay. more just for fizz, and this for exploring and okay. fun stuff. That's interesting. That's probably about right though, isn't it? Yep. Um, so what's the secret into uh, a motor which lasts a long time, would you say? Uh, be really careful with the jet washer or just use a hose. And uh, plenty of GT85 or WD40. Mm -hmm. Keep it away from the TCU, keep it away from the motor. Let the bike drain properly afterwards, dry it off, and just being mechanically sympathetic. Okay, mechanically sympathetic. I'll be sleeping on that one. Hey, Al, thanks for uh, for your insight. Nice one. Thanks. Thank you very much, Al. Uh, insightful stuff. Right, tech time with Owen. One Minute Wonder, we're doing brake lever position. It's a really big topic. There's lots of science in there, but we're gonna just do a really skimmed version, hopefully in a minute. So one finger is what we want to aim for. Uh, index finger is pretty much what everybody uses, and for good reason. You can overlap your thumb, you can get quite a lot of grip, and modern brakes are really powerful. Okay, Jonesy used to run middle finger for a little while, but I think even he's come around to single finger. So we've talked about finger position. Next is the angle of the dangle. So what position you're gonna run the lever on the bar. So if you're from an XC and BMX background, you might run your levers quite low. Conversely, if you're from a DH or Moto background or Moto Trials background, you might run them really quite flat. There's pros and cons to both. What I'll say is try and get somewhere in the middle. If you're struggling with arm pump on technical descents or the steep gnar, then get those levers up. Why? Well, your arms will be sort of more in line on the steep stuff when you're on the back of the bike. And well, you might not be doing as much braking when you're pedaling along the flat. So you might not need the super position that you have for XC or BMX. So play with it. If in doubt, personally, I'd recommend going a little bit more higher up, a bit flatter, um, but yeah, experiment. But try some different positions and try and get one finger braking set up. Right, folks, uh, it's feedback time from you guys. I finally got to ride at Pinion MGU in the hills, yes. in the mud, uh, on there proper trails. Fantastic, great day out. No shortage of comments, were there? No shortage video. of comments. No shortage and, at yeah. all. And folks, and actually, do you know what? Keep them coming because um, 
obviously there's lots to talk about. The first thing to talk about from uh, one viewer, which is 50 watt <laughs> nomad travel nurse. Yeah, MTV Very bike. noisy, but love the idea, great for e-bikes. Bang on. Yes. I'd now, say pretty bang on. Yeah, do you, know, do you know what? I have to say that it was noisier in the video than it actually is in real life. And I think part of that is the acoustics of the Do you think our audio GoPro. actually picked it up too much? I think it did. <laughs> Excuse me, I think that it did. Amplified it. I think it did amplify it. That motor, that Pinion MG is nowhere near the sound that it comes across. Maybe we, we could have toned it down, but then people have said, oh, you turned that video down, and it, but yeah. we didn't. Well, that ties in nicely, actually. Our next sort of comment from Mr. Martin Shu said, yeah, I am wondering if it is that loud, or is the camera microphone setup picking up more sound that your ears will actually hear? As in, is it picking, that you know, our mics are picking up stuff that we wouldn't hear? Uh, well, certainly yeah, you wouldn't yeah, hear it, would you? Absolutely, Pardon? yeah. Pardon? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what yeah, do we need? Correct. Hearing aids. When do we need them? Hearing aids. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? We we read a comment uh, from Steve about the motor noise under load. There was there was actually different sounds to the motor in different gears. So yes, yeah. Um, obviously, if you ride any e-mountain bike, your rider weight, the steepness of the climb, will affect the kind oh. of you know like it does on a car, right? Or, or any motor yeah, yeah. vehicle. Uh, and then David, David ZX692 wanted to know more about the pinion. Is it cheaper than a Ooh. standard e-bike? Is it more silent uphill than a standard e-bike? Does it have any disadvantages or is it just perfect compared to the standard e-bike? Whoa, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> ah. It's the same price as a standard e-bike. Is yeah. it more silent than a standard e-bike? It's about, it's a little bit noisier than a Bosch. Uh, does it have any disadvantages? Disadvantages... Uh, actually, do you know what? Um, gates actually do say in heavy clay you can damage the belt on it. But remember, the pinion does come with a, a with a like on the road field with a mm -hmm. chain system. Uh, but overall, for me, like like I said earlier, the, the silence downhill. Yeah, it's amazing. Hear the tires. You start hearing all these other. For me, when I rode the Gamex again, so to go back. I could then hear when I was like clanging off rocks and stuff. So actually, you pick up on other noises that you. Can't Would you hear consider me? yourself a clanger, Rich? These views are pretty spectacular, Rich. They are stunning, aren't they? This is from Nicola.jr. Wow, amazing. I don't know where uh, is it, this interest of vibe. And then what about this next one? That is some... That's on an EXE as well. Yeah. Bang it. This next one, that is some way to drop in, isn't it? Uh, I mean... That is like, yeah. Is this a hell of a stop? I... Uh, Neat. I like that. That like is... That. Tidy. Yeah. And then uh, Reese Wilson, the uh, former World Cup downhill champion. Back on it. Man on a mission. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's, the shapes that he throws in this are wicked. I, I mean, he's a, I hope he's back to yeah. past form this year. Mad for it, mind. Ah. Mad for it, mind. proper likes Mad the old rut bang mind. in there, doesn't he? He does. Denim. Denim. Ah. Denim, mind. Denim, yeah. mind. Yeah. <laughs> Good show. Good show. Uh, right. Coming up on the channel, uh, on the weekend yeah. is athlete versus EMTB. This is where Richard Payne, the Hello. house of Payne, takes a mountain bike and goes head to head with an E mountain bike. With myself, essentially. Yeah. The results are quite staggering. <laughs> they, yeah. Tune into the channel this weekend, yeah. folks, and we'll see you next week. See ya.